So, Operation Motherland has come and gone, but the hype for Ghost Recon Breakpoint was probably higher than it has ever been. Let's get into it. It was great to see Karen Bowman back as our handler. Jane Perry does a great job as playing the iconic character and I know a lot of people in the community are connected to Bowman due to their time in Ghost Recon Wildlands. Wildlands music also made a comeback into the game during this update and it's something I have mixed feelings about. There are some audio issues where the wrong music is playing at the wrong time and I feel like the Wildlands music was out of place. When I hear that music and those melodies, I think back to my time in Bolivia and it just didn't sit well with me while playing this update in Breakpoint. I found myself muting the music and putting on something else in the background or leaving the music off completely. There seems to be some audio bugs as well. Sometimes the bivouac music plays at the wrong time and things like that, but nothing too game breaking. The new enemy archetypes were a breath of fresh air for a game that felt like its enemies had no real identity. Sentinel, who are private military contractors, are now overshadowed by their Bodar counterparts, who provide the game with substance when it comes to creating a geopolitical narrative. I know Ubisoft Paris and game developers have to walk a fine line when it comes to creating artwork that may shine negative connotations, although fictionally, for some countries. However, I'm glad that Ubisoft dug into their back pocket and pulled out the boat arcs for nothing more than creating a feeling like the player is finally going up against the worthy adversary. The mechanics that each archetype provides feels great. I know some players have an issue with the oppressor who comes as a heavily armored soldier and their helmet. With large or small calibers, the player still has to pop the oppressor's helmet off his head before they can shoot for the headshot. I do know some people have a problem with this, especially when they're using 50 caliber weapons. I guess it just doesn't feel right and has too much of an arcadey video game feel to them. They believe the armor should be penetrated and the enemy should be killed depending on the bullet caliber that they are using. Outside of that, I do believe the oppressor's armor was a job well done. Designers gave the armor a realistic destruction mechanic. So when shooting at the oppressor, you can see in real time his armor pop off and be destroyed, showcasing weak spots to then kill this enemy. I felt like this was a great mechanic and a cool addition for this enemy archetype. Besides the oppressor, the seeker is the other enemy that stands out the most. I know this is another enemy archetype that some people do not like. Some on the forums and reddit might always ask for future soldier camo, but I'm not sure if providing an enemy with this type of mechanic is something the majority of the community wanted. I don't mind the secret class, I think they're a cool enemy. Obviously with the Azrael drone, it is very difficult to see them and kill them depending on the time of day, and the Azrael drone really provides a sense of dread now when playing in Operation Motherland. I think for the Seeker, it would be cool if Ubisoft provided these classes with actual night vision that worked and not just the cosmetic on the model's head. Understandably, that would have to be baked into the AI, and I know we won't be getting that in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, but moving forward, these are the types of mechanics I hope Ubisoft can flesh out when creating Ghost Recon games. If certain classes are to have night vision goggles equipped on them, it should not be a cosmetic and it should actually work as intended. Creeping through the night, players would be seen easier with classes that have night vision equipped. As for Breakpoint, this would ensure that the Seekers are a direct counterbalance to players using the optic camo. The mission structure was simple, straightforward, repetitive, but it worked. I think Ubisoft realized that sometimes the simplest of missions are the best. Clear a base, save POWs or hostages, destroy enemy equipment and assassinate leaders. Ubisoft Paris most definitely heard the community when we spoke out about the fact that traversing the entire map from one mission to the next is not something that should be done moving forward. The original story had us moving around the map way too much, pushing players to use fast travel and helicopters to get around. With Operation Motherland, the mission format is much cleaner. 
keeping players in the same area and on the ground if they choose so, completing one mission after the other before moving on to another province. I applaud Ubisoft at the way they designed these missions because I found myself having an immense amount of fun outside of the main missions and compounds and engaging enemies in the jungle a lot more due to the fact that I was walking from one mission to the next. Although we've been playing the same map now for over two years, fighting new enemies and having new missions kept me engaged and I didn't find myself getting bored going through the entire Operation Motherland campaign. The biggest improvement to Ghost Recon Breakpoint and Ghost Recon as a franchise has got to be the dynamic missions that actually change what is going on in the game world. Make no mistake about it, Ubisoft Paris deserves much praise for building out this mechanic and connecting it to what they created in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Destroy trucks and Bodoc reinforcements can't get around. Save outcast POWs and you have more friendly troops patrolling the province. There have been many discussions about players affecting the game world depending on what they do, and one that probably got the most attention within this tactical shooter community was by Operator Drewski. Destroy your radio tower and communications go out. Destroy your power plant and electricity goes out. Perhaps an honor system with civilians. There have been many ideas going around for the past couple of years now, and seeing the world in Ghost Recon never change depending on what the player does was something many community members have discussed and wanted to see changed. Ubisoft Paris obviously heard us and spent this time developing the mechanics necessary to connect the game world to player choices and have that world change depending on what the player had done. I can't say this loud enough. Bravo Ubisoft Paris. I understand these mechanics were connected to what has already been developed in this game and that there were decisions to be made about what you were going to dynamically connect and how. And I can see that moving forward, the game worlds that Ubisoft create for Ghost Recon can only get better from here on out, knowing that this mechanic now exists. As for the rest of the game world, I absolutely love that at every step there are patrols, helicopters, Azrael flyovers, and lots of soldiers outside of the compounds. The tactician ensures that enemies come in droves and Aroa almost has that Unidad mechanic feel. The world finally felt like it was a place of anarchy and dread for the player, and moving every step risked you getting killed. I know there are people out there who don't like the constant helicopter flyovers and Azrael drones, but for me, I play the game as a shooter first and a stealth game second. I'm not much into creeping around and stealthing everywhere, and I did not mind at all shooting down choppers, hiding from Azrael drones, or allowing Azrael drones to see me and having shootouts with Seekers. I absolutely loved my time in this chaotic world playing Operation Motherland. The weapon mastery system is something that provides the player an extra level of engagement with their weapons and abilities. I think the mobility upgrade is the biggest improvement out of all the choices and helps players move around a lot more efficiently while aiming with their weapons. The only thing I might have liked to have seen with this system is something that reflects your choice mattering and not being able to fill up every upgrade in the weapons column. Moving forward, if Ubisoft is to push Ghost Recon as becoming more of an RPG, it must become an RPG with mechanics that make sense for the tactical shooter. The weapon upgrade system is a perfect example of providing choice and having players fit different roles depending on what they choose. As for the optic camo system, if you follow me and come by my live streams, you'll already know that I don't utilize the optic camo. I think it's kind of cheesy and I don't have fun creeping around not having enemies see me. That being said, I think the camo system looks really cool. I think it's a great mechanic for those who want to use it and I think it opens up a ton of opportunities for an actual camouflage system in the game. I've spoken on this and created a video for it. Seeing how the optic camo system works, Ubisoft Paris definitely has the fundamentals down to create an actual camouflage system where what the player is wearing can affect how the AI sees you depending on the terrain that the player is in. 
but enough of that. I think the camo system worked well and is another mechanic that provides players a fresh way to take on enemy bases. Before I end this video, I want to give a quick mention about the doodads that are out there in the jungles in between enemy compounds. Outcasts or civilian bodies being burned, innocent civilians and scientists shot to death, remnants of firing squads. You can see Bordark soldiers have come in and wiped out lots of the Aroan population, causing chaos and mayhem everywhere they go. I loved walking by and seeing Bordark soldiers standing over their war crimes as bodies were burnt to a crisp. It was an excellent addition and the type of thing that makes a game world feel alive and connects the player to it. It seems that Ubisoft Paris had a lot of creative freedom in this update and they took full advantage of it. I think the player base has to come away with the feeling that the majority of the things we've spoken about have been heard and Ubisoft Paris has tried to provide us with the gameplay that we want. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's my review in a nutshell. Operation Motherland was a breath of fresh air and the update that the community needed. I give a lot of praise to Ubisoft Paris and the minds behind this update because for me, I think it reflects what the community has been asking for the past couple of years and showcases that Ubisoft Paris is not going to give up on making Ghost Recon great again. Alright ghosts, that's all for now. Let me know what you thought of Operation Motherland down below and we'll discuss some things like always. Everyone have a great day and I will see you all in the next video. Alright guys, peace. Man, what I wouldn't give for some MVGs.